All right, so let's talk about some of the common mistakes people make with Arduino. Mistake one, only working with Arduino and no naked or standalone microcontrollers. Now I get it, you might be asking, okay, this is about Arduino, so why the heck am I talking about PICs and other microcontrollers? Things like the Arduino have helped many school-age children and older makers alike spark an interest in electronics and programming. And they're great for learning and prototyping projects. If you're new to programming and microcontrollers, you should totally start with Arduino. Once you become proficient with Arduino and have a few projects under your belt, I do suggest that you start working with naked or standalone microcontrollers in addition to Arduino. Yes, it'll be harder at first to work directly with the standalone micro, but if you stick with it, you'll find it's worth it. Start with one you may be familiar with, the ATmega 328P, the chip that powers the Arduino Uno. You'll learn a lot about the registers and other internal workings of a microcontroller, and how the code you write actually gets translated into digital pulses and instructions that can do useful things. Not properly and safely powering your Arduino. Now, powering the Arduino is something many of us put little thought into. Most of us simply grab our wall ward, jam it in the Arduino's DC jack, and go to town on whatever it is we're working on. Or sadly, the Arduino stays tethered to the PC for life to draw its power, never getting a chance to explore its world or see the light of day. The Arduino Uno's built-in power supply is one of the least appreciated but most important parts of the board. In fact, if your Arduino-based creation is giving you weird or spurious errors and you can't figure out why, there's a good chance the power supply could be the culprit. And many an Arduino has died to bad powering practices. Now, the Uno lists for $25. At that price, frying too many boards can rack up a pretty significant cost. Not commenting your code enough or at all. Comments and programming are one of the most basic yet useful things. You can never have too many comments in your code. Unfortunately, many of us, especially those new to programming, don't see it this way. The compiler ignores comments. They are descriptive statements for humans to read, so you and others can understand your code. In other words, comments should explain what the code does. Good programming practice says to use them generously. And I'd bet you money that after a while, you'll forget what something in your code does and you'll burn hours of time trying to figure out your own program. Don't be that person. The Arduino sketch snippet in this figure depicts this concept. Notice the comments give a ton of information about the program. It talks about what the program does. It even talks about the hardware. And it talks about the, the date it was written and the revisions and what pin to use and other information. And you can use comments anywhere in a code, not just the beginning. Though it may be a good idea to include a block of comments like this in your sketches, especially if you're new. Using the SMD version of the UNO if you're a beginner. Now, SMD stands for Surface Mount Device. And Arduino makes a version of the UNO with a surface-mounted microcontroller, as we can see here in this picture. The problem is, if that you're new to the platform, there's a chance you could fry the microcontroller. Because it's an SMD part, replacing it will be difficult unless you're good with surface mount soldering, and you'll most likely need to buy a whole new board for 20 something dollars instead of buying a new AT Mega 328, the non SMD version, of course, for like two bucks. And yes, you can buy standalone AT Mega 328s that are ready to work with the Arduino Uno. If you're a beginner, do yourself a fave and use the Uno with the dual inline package or dip version of the chip, like you see here. Not keeping a few spare 18 Mega 328s on hand. Of course, we want the dip version. Now, speaking of replacing the microcontroller on your Uno, it's hard to do when you don't have any spares. Everyone should keep a few spares on hand, especially if you're a beginner. You can buy four of them with a bootloader already installed for about 15 or 16 bucks. If you don't have spares and end up killing your chip, plan on waiting a few days or a week for your replacements to arrive while your project collects dust. Not backing up your code files and project files. Now, the number of people who fail to back up their computer often amazes me, as do the number of people who don't back up their programs and code. If you do back up your PC on a regular basis, your code files should hopefully be backed up also. If not, you're one hard drive failure or malware infection away from losing all your work. I recommend copying or imaging your whole hard drive to an external hard drive and also using an off-site backup solution. 
And the off-site solution can be something like Dropbox, Carbonite, or some other solution. Whatever methods you choose, back up your sketches with multiple ways. You can even use flash drives, cloud storage, CDs, whatever. Just do it. Finally, not learning enough about electronics. And this one is important for at least three reasons. First of all, it helps to understand what all the parts on your Arduino board are for and what their tolerances are. Second, if you're going to do anything useful with the Arduino, you'll need to hook other things to it, like resistors, LEDs, relays, transistors, coils, and even other microcontrollers. Understanding electronics and how these parts work, along with their tolerances and quirks, can be very helpful. And finally, unless you have a fortune to spend on Arduinos, you may want to recreate your best projects on another PCB or printed circuit board with a standalone microcontroller after prototyping and testing it with your Arduino. I recommend making sure you have a good understanding of things like voltage, current, power, basic AC-DC electronics, and the most common components. Now, no way is this list all-inclusive. There are other mistakes people can make with Arduino. But this covers many of the most common ones beginners and even experienced people make. I really hope this can help you on your quest to learn, create, and have fun.